It is 7.53. You're watching Breakfast from BBC News and pet groups are now concerned that the sharp rise in so-called dog napping in lockdown over the last year will increase even further in the coming months. Yeah, one dog, dog organisation says it's seen a rise of 250% in reports of thefts last year. In 2019, Dog Lost, that's the name of the charity, um, recorded 179 stolen pets and that figure jumped to 465 in 2020. Compare that to the first three months of this year and so far they've already had 168 stolen dog reports, almost as many as the whole of 2019. Well, just this weekend, a heartbroken couple made a desperate appeal for information uh, on their Labrador, that's so Denzel and Welly, when they were stolen from outside a shop in Nantwich in Cheshire. You can see the CCTV footage there showing two men running away with those two dogs. Now, let's speak now to Debbie Matthews, who is Chief Executive of the Stolen and Missing Pets Alliance, and Karen Crawley, who's Cocker Spaniel Chester is sadly missing and feared stolen. Morning both. Karen, Good if morning. I could come to you first, just tell me what, what happened to you. Um, well, I was in the shop and I Chester as usual um, uh, on the 4th of March and we just ran ahead a few paces round a, a corner in the footpath and when I got to there maybe 10 seconds later there was no sign of him at all um, immediately of course started searching and normally he has really good recall um, and there was nothing I spoke to lots of you know, lots of people around spoke to everybody no one had seen anything so we began doing an extensive search. I called some friends and family out. Um, there wasn't a single sighting. Um, so at first you think he's just missing, but as time went on and more searching was done, uh, eventually uh, we have to come to a conclusion. He vanished into thin air, but uh, somebody did pick him up and, and, and take him. And Karen, how much of an impact has this had on you? huge i mean it's it's devastating you, you you're, he's my constant companion um obviously a, a great a great help through um through lockdown um but anyway we've been been together for a lot of years but in addition to that um he acts as an early warning system um for when my blood sugar is dropping i'm a type 1 diabetic and uh, sometimes don't get warning symptoms but he spots it and comes and pours at me and lets me know and um, make the connection. Oh, okay, you're trying to tell me something. And I now do my blood test and um, <clears throat> discover that I am going into a, a hypo, a low blood sugar. Karen, it's just, it's so upsetting, isn't it? And as we're hearing, you know, this is becoming more and more common at the moment. Debbie, I know that your dogs were stolen a number of years ago, but you've got them back with a thanks to your late great dad, Bruce Forsyth. Uh, tell us what happened to you. Well, I, I'd left them in my car, which I know everybody will say you should never leave your dog in the car, but in 2006, dog theft wasn't heard of. Um, I got back to my car, my window had been smashed and the two dogs were gone. And the police um, were called straight away and they said, well, as it's nothing valuable, we won't come out as it's only dogs. Wow. Um, so I found out straight away that there wasn't any help for me. I didn't understand back then that dogs were property in, in law. And then I found out that micro, the microchip wasn't going to help me either. So thank God I had my dad because with, without him, I would never have gotten back. And the good news is, though, Debbie, at least you did, you know, they were returned to you. So how, how long did that take and what was that like? And I suppose that's giving you a real insight into, into what it's like for those people like Karen who have lost their dog. You never forget that moment. Um, it's devastating. You know, that our pets aren't property. They're irreplaceable, priceless members of our family. Um, and to get them back was just unbelievable. You know, everybody warned me, said, oh, you there's no way you're going to get them back. That's it. They're gone. Um, and to get them back was just incredible. But with that, as I said, without my father, I would never have never have got them because they were seven years old and neutered. I was told that they'd probably be sold on quickly for cash. And um, that's what had happened. They'd been sold on. Widget was in a sold in a livestock market in Southall and Gizmo was in a park in Hayes.
and I got them both back. Wow, Karen, um, you know, listening to that story, I don't know how much hope do you have that you might eventually see Chester again? Do you still have hope? Absolutely, I still have hope. I mean, um, <clears throat> just in the last week or two, um, police uh, in two different counties have recovered a, a large number of stolen dogs, uh, some of whom have been taken from different parts of the country um, and uh, reunited after a, a, a year or two apart. So there is always still hope. But in the meantime, every single day um, is, is a struggle. And it's also possible, of course, <clears throat> in my case, that somebody local has found him and is keeping him um, for themselves, which is, which is also a problem that, that does happen. Um, so I hope that it, whoever's got him, if they see this, that um, they can just take him to a vet or call the dog warden, um, get him microchip scanned, and they'll be able to get him back to me. Karen, we wish, you the, we wish you the very, very best of luck. Karen Crawley and Debbie Matthews, thank you both. And some uh, pretty um, basic advice as well. I know that Debbie has mentioned this in the past as well. The number uh, one place that dogs are stolen from is actually the garden. So, you know, check your gates. If you can, think about putting some CCTV in. That's recommended as well. Never leave them unattended in a shop or in a car. And even to let, I mean, it's crazy that dog owners have to think about this, but walking your dogs at different times, different routes, and just be vigilant all the time at the moment, particularly. Such a distressing story, isn't it? Any dog owner at all. Um, it's 8 o'clock, headlines 